going to introduce, and so as I said, we've got our friend True Serva, Marcus Montana, who serves as a pastor of Redeeming Love Church down in the Twin Cities area. He is their creative arts pastor and excited to have him here with us today. And so would you help welcome to the stage True Serva? Good morning. How y'all feeling today? Y'all good? Live and awake? So like you said, my name is Marcus Montana. Also, what he didn't mention, I'm a graduate of Trinity Bible College. Woo! And finally got a few in the building. There we go, one in the back. Exactly 30 years before me. <laughs> so that just means I'm kind of young, you know? <laughs> And so, um, yeah, so I am a credential minister with the Assembly of God, and um, it's just cool to be here, to be able to travel, to, to um, hopefully today I can maybe give you a little encouragement, or some of y'all might think to be a little challenged, you know, every, everywhere I go I say I come for two reasons, one to encourage, one to challenge, because how many of us know some days we can use a hug, amen? And other days we can use the kick in the behind to keep it moving. <laughs> Amen. So today, with the, whatever one you need, I'm hopefully you can find one, but the encouragement is to find it in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so um, I've been at Redeeming Love Church now, uh, going on two years as the creative arts pastor. So I oversee worship and production and the media department and um, just trying to bring us into a new light a little bit. We celebrated our pastor, Pastor Mike Smith, being our pastor for 50 years this year. So, or yeah, 51 coming up in uh, the fall this year. So he's been around for a little bit, you know, and um, it's just been cool to hear stories. Our church was actually birthed doing, um, you know, they got the Jesus Revolution movie out right now. And our church was actually birthed out of that movie where they just had a coffee shop reaching hippies that turned into which was Calvary Assembly of God in White Bear Lake and then I uh, moved on to Maplewood 30 years ago this year to become Redeeming Love Church and so it's a cool exciting time and as we see the Lord do things or if we see him done things or reminded of things he's done we just like Lord do it again you know and um as we see, you know, the time in our just life of how culture is and, you know, the Lord can change things real quick. I got a picture right here of my family. So uh, me and my wife celebrating this year, uh, being married 12 years coming up in July. Yeah. And so our oldest is Malachi. So he's 10. And um, every, I was just thinking about that uh, kids camp video that we saw. So my son's 10, so I think it was three years ago, his first year he went to camp and he got filled with the Holy Spirit at kids yeah. camp and he's been yeah. a different person since, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of <laughs> getting emotional because, you know, he's just kind of those things you pray and hope for for your kids. And then my second child is Mercy. She just turned eight earlier this month, and I'm gonna share a little bit more of her story in the message, but uh, she's good to go to her first kids camp uh, this summer. And so, and then I have Maxwell, which is about to turn six, and then 19 month year old Maverick. And I heard there was another Maverick here in the, in the church, a little one, and so, I was trying to tell my wife, I don't know about naming these kids. If you know things about names of kids, they. <laughs> and so, but uh, yeah, let me just pray and then we're going to jump in. Promise not to keep y'all too long today, even though we might get snowed in, so I've got an extra night. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your grace in this place, your love and your hope. Lord, we thank you um, for showing up in our lives, just where two or three are gathered, you're there. And so, Lord, we press in to you today. Um, speak to us, teach us, help us to grow, 
help us to move. When we encounter you, um, we should be provoked to move into action. So just do that in our lives today as we place our trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. So if you got a Bible with you today, I did not um, put all the scriptures on the slide. So um, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 2, kicking off in verse 1. You know, as today we're celebrating, uh, I guess, celebration of uh, Palm Sunday, the final week of Jesus' life, that this week as we look at him and then what happened, you know, as we're remembering for next weekend, provoke us or move us into life in Christ, you know. So Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore we also, since we're surrounded by great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run a race with endurance, the race that is set before us. So quick question. Who in here played sports over your life? Got a few. How about the ones who didn't play sports that made you go to PE class? <laughs> <laughs> Always trying to get you active, right? And so if you know anything about running, when you run a lot, you can get tired. Because running can be tired. You know, it's the craziest thing is that if you play any other sport, like anybody here ran track, who ran track or cross country? All right, we got a few in here. And then did y'all play any other sports? Yeah. So the craziest thing about, because I, I ran track, um, played football, so I didn't do cross country, even though I probably wouldn't have done that way. <laughs> but it's so crazy how the thing that we hate about every other sport it's the running. <laughs> and then we go and join the track of the cross country team. But hey, everything has its purpose, right? So running can be tired, especially if we're running the wrong race. Hebrews 12.1 talks about a much different race that we should be running versus the one we're usually taking part in. See, one thing I know for certain is that we are in a race. So look to your neighbor right quick. I don't know if y'all do this in here, but look to your neighbor and say, hey, why are you running? <laughs> My goal is, you know, it's just a slow move to get you into action, right? <laughs> See, the race that is set before us includes two major things. To love God and to love people. See, this year coming up, November, I'm celebrating 27 years of walking with the Lord, you know? So it's been a while. Some ups and downs, the good, the bad, the uglies. But let me tell you this. Jesus sustains us through it all. Amen. When we trust him, we can make it. So knowing we're going to go through different seasons in life, we place our trust in him. And for that, because a lot of times when we're interacting with others in our communities, schools, jobs, in our own house, normally what we would extend to them is what we feel. So if we feel love, we can extend love. If we have joy, we can give joy. If we have peace, then we give that to others. If we have forgiveness. So today we're going to talk about some types of runners. And I want you to think about today what type of runner you might be or are you. The first type of runner we have here is a sprinter. Anybody ever watch the Olympics? You know, when you watch the Olympics, you tune into the track and field meet. I know even go back down to high school, when you show up to the high school meet, everybody in town come to see because they want to see who's the fastest man, who's the fastest woman in town, amen? And usually there's two things that determine those track that people come to see, the 100 meter dash 
or the four by four that usually closes out the meet to see who's going to win it that day. But if you're watching a sprinter and you look at it, they have a chiseled physique. And when they're running, there's no wasted motion. Smooth, just like gliding down the track, you know? Fluid motion. And since I was younger, up in even till when I got at uh, Trinity, I helped start a uh, track team that we had for a few seasons. Um, the cross country team there is thriving now. But, um, but since I was younger, I was always a sprinter, you know? But when we see things in life when, such as a sprint or even in the Olympics, it's crazy how people would train for four years to run a race that's less than 10 seconds, <laughs> you know? But that's what it is. It's over in a second, you know? In an instant. And that's how we treat life sometimes. We go from thing to thing and then how quick can we move on to the next thing? Like, I don't see anybody playing Pokemon Go anymore. <laughs> And at one point, you know, I mean, we literally got one of those creatures in the parking lot at our church. And so random times, people would just be driving through and be like, well, I guess you got to do what you got to do to get people to church, amen? <laughs> and then that's what we do sometimes with life as well. We're on looking for instant results of satisfaction or what tends to happen. We get bored. Now, who in here like chicken nuggets? Anybody like chicken nuggets? Okay. Now, does chicken nuggets taste better when you make them in the oven or make them in the microwave? In the oven, right? But how many of us be like, man, I ain't got time for that? <laughs> Put them in the microwave. And what we do? We sacrifice quality for convenience, instant satisfaction. The next type of runner I have here is the Forrest Gump runner. <laughs> run, Forrest, run! Who in here seen that? Now y'all say I ask a lot of questions, I'm just realizing. <laughs> and it's so crazy to see how many even uh, young people have seen Forrest Gump, you know? But this is the type of runner where something tragic has happened to you. Parents died, had a divorce, separation, you might have lost a child, or just something tragic that happens and someone you know got sick, you know, we just went through a season where a lot of people got sick of COVID or just even this year has been crazy in school of how many kids got pneumonia or who got strep or who got, I'm like, man. And it's so crazy how everybody always gets the same thing at the same time. <laughs> but we've seen people, you know, um, because our pastor at our church is, you know, a little older, he's turned 71 this year. We have people who've been in our congregation a long time, so we've been seen, you know, just some people pass away over the last couple of years for various reasons, you know? And um, those things hurt, you know? We just actually had a funeral, two funerals last week. One girl who was a, actually a missionary in my neighborhood. That tell you what type of neighborhood I live in. That <laughs> we got like 20 full-time missionaries that live in my neighborhood. You know, and um, one girl, she actually babysit our kids and until she got sick, you know, I actually didn't even realize how much I cared about her, <laughs> you know, how close she was to our family, you know, and it, it really was hard on my kids, you know, and um, just to see her, um, you know, she battled cancer for probably four years and she had came out of it for a season and then um, towards right there at the end, but you know, it's definitely a um, hope from the Lord as she served him up until the end. She chose to find her hope in Christ, and 
Um, and that was something she said right at the end, you know, I ran my race well, even though she was young, you know? And even younger than that, we did a funeral for an 11 year old. And when we do funerals for kids, they're the worst, <laughs> you know? Like for somebody who's older, you can say, man, they had a full life, and especially if they known Christ, it is something that we celebrate, you know? But when somebody's younger and it's just like, man, too soon. And when we face those hurts, what tend to happen is that we just start running. And we run, and we run, and we run. You know, we run from our families, from our jobs, from responsibilities. And then ultimately, we end up running from the Lord, you know? And so we're in a point where you still believe in God, you know? But you're wondering if he believes in you. Still go to church because that's just what we've known to do. But we quit trusting. And the vision that we have for the finish line becomes a little hazy. We can't see it anymore, you know? You ever been going up an elevator and got off on the wrong floor? <laughs> We're just kind of in our own world and how did I get here? And that can happen sometimes when we're hurt. And I believe that's why it's important for us to worship, to pray, to attend church, read our Bible, memorize scripture, you know? Especially in the good times when things are going great because that allows us to dig roots, allows us to be planted. So then we, when we do face a time like 2020 of in a pandemic or when we're dealing with racial injustice or political unrest. You know, there's a war going on in Ukraine. We have tons of school shootings and it's like, what in the world is going on? It allows us to not be wavered. So something personal for myself, I mean, you kind of know where we're at in the current life with my daughter but when my daughter was born, you know, she spent the first four weeks of her life in the hospital. And so she was born on time, but she was born with some defects in her brain that would cause her to have seizures. And she got to a point where she was having a seizure every single hour. So, you know, as a dad, as a man, all I wanted to do was fix it. You know, what can I do so my little girl don't have to hurt? What can I do so my little girl don't have to feel pain. But in all my natural strength, couldn't do nothing, you know? But what we could do is trust, have hope, believe, because the Bible says that he works all things out for those that love him and are called according to his word. So for us in the most difficult season of our lives as parents, that's what we knew how to do, you know? Love the Lord, walk out the plan, that he has for us. But when you're sitting there by yourself, quiet, praying, and just be like, Lord, what is up? You know, at this time, I have been walking with the Lord 18, 19 years, you know? So I hadn't been to a whole lot of church services. Spent a whole lot of time in prayer and worship, reading my Bible, memorizing scripture, giving up my life for the sake of sharing the gospel. And then you fought, uh, face something like this, you know? Like, what's up? But it was crazy because it seems like out of nowhere, like as if when, when blowing through, we had peace in our hearts, you know? Because of those times of digging in and seeing the Lord show up over and over and over again in our lives, we can trust in Him. And even though when we met with the neurologist and she was like, well, your daughter doesn't have any brain activity and we don't expect her to make it. You know, as a Christian, we're like, well, we're not gonna take that report home, you know? And that's what we said, but that doesn't mean those times don't get difficult and then that's when we press in to the Lord, you know? And so even in the midst of it though, we know our hope doesn't lie in this lifetime, but our hope lies in eternity, you know? And that's 
something that we can lean on because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. One day we will all rise with him, you know? And so with that, I mean, you might not have faced nothing that tragic, but you face something that's hurt to you or have kept you up at night, you know, wondering, even if it's on making right decisions, you know, or what should you do for the future? And some days you feel like you're doing it all by yourself. You're doing it all alone. I want to share this song with y'all real quick that I'm hoping it'll provide some hope for you today. So seeing the photo from the beginning, you would know why the neurologist told us that we had no hope with my daughter. We just celebrated a couple weeks ago of her turning eight years old, happy, healthy, whole, full of life, you know? And if you didn't know she had issues, you wouldn't know she had issues, you know? But with that, I was just saying that today to hope that just brings some encouragement to you today, you know, in uh, whatever battle, challenge you might be facing. The next type of runner we have here, oh, time to pass real quick. <laughs> I guess we're talking about running and I'm we're trying to build some consistency here and uh, we might need to go back to the sprinter. <laughs> But the next type of runner here we have is the long distance runner. This is where you become dedicated, runs with consistency, thinks of long-term goals, in it for the long haul. Not focus on speed, but on being consistent and the end result, you know? The Bible says not to the swift or the strong, but those that can get to the end. And that's the encouragement today is to get to the end, you know? This is where you start to gain a little endurance in your faith. Now you have a little longevity. You can run a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon in your faith. But sometimes when we get to these points, we can also get complacent. We're just been doing it so long we start to coast. You know, like when you get on the freeway, you set it at 75, and you just roll. And then you don't even remember how you got there. <laughs> you just show up there. And that's how we can get at life. At this, at this stage where we've been doing it, we learn how to do all the right things, you know, and now we just coasting. So we go into Bible study, small group, attending church, but the things that used to change our hearts don't do it anymore. Because now we're just like, man, I heard of that. And it doesn't change us. And I would say, how do we keep from getting to that point? And I truly believe it's our interaction with non-believers that keep us, or non-followers that keeps us from getting there. Because whether it's family members, co-workers, neighbors, when you get to see somebody experience grace for the first time, I know it happens with me, it brings me back to that experience of seeing God's grace. There's nothing that gets me more emotional than hearing a testimony about the Lord's grace, you know? See, we're called to be salt and light in the dark place. But you know, some Christians be like, oh, they got that North Dakota bland. It's a little bland. Does that make any sense to you? That just mean they ain't got no salt. <laughs> you know, like we mentioned, I went to Trinity Bible College. I spent five years in North Dakota. They don't use salt on nothing. <laughs> Not even the roads. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you're from North Dakota? Sorry. <laughs> and then there's somebody, you know, when you see them, you know they love Jesus. 
you know that they are seasoned nicely. See, I grew up in Louisiana where we call it, we got that Tony Satchers. So I don't know if you can get it in the grocery store here, but if you need a little bit for your food, I can send you up some. But it's just adding flavor to life, adding flavor to those that are around you. And I believe that's what keeps the appreciation of God's grace in our heart as we reach out to those and share the good news with them. It also keeps us from becoming judgmental. Have you ever heard of people saying that Christians are a bunch of judgmental hypocrites? And I believe this is the thing. Not that it's wrong to do the right thing. It's always the right time to do the right thing, says Martin Luther King. But we get to a point in our journey at this stage where we've learned to do the right thing so much, we don't need God's grace anymore. And because we know how to do the right things, we tend to judge people who don't. And that's why I feel like it's important as we keep God's grace in front of us, we are allowed to extend that to others. That allow them to come in relationship with Christ and receive that grace. Amen. Amen. See, sharing the good news can be real simple. Walk up to somebody in the grocery store and just be like, hey, can I tell you the greatest thing that ever happened to me? And then boom, you share your story with them. You know, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And when we share our stories with others, they get to experience true change that happens with Jesus Christ. Let's jump a little quick to our fourth type of runner. And this one right here is the marathoner. They say a marathon is hard, but it's simple. Right foot, left foot. Right foot, left foot. Not for a long time. <laughs> but it's simple, right? Let us look to Jesus. He ran a race that was consistent. He finished physically running at the cross. After three days, he started his final race when he rose from the dead. Then he started the resurrection race. And what did he do? He passed the baton to us. So that now we can live resurrected lives. Amen. Hebrews 12 verse 2. The next verse. Looking on to Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Endured the cross. Despising the shame. And is seated down at the right hand of God. So sometimes we're going to go through difficulties on this journey. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will have the strength to endure. What is your direction? Where are you running? A lot of times we get caught up running from something instead of, instead of to something or someone. Today, are you carrying extra weight? Are you carrying responsibilities of others? Are you running alone? You know, I heard this as a uh, business quote, but I think it works well in our Christian faith. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And I think that's a reason, you know, when the disciples went out, no one went by themselves, but two by two. Because we do face challenges, we face hardships, and days we want to give up. And it's nice to have somebody that can encourage us. You know, give you a phone call. Or you might need to be that encourager. Give that phone call. Say, keep going. 
You can do it. I'm praying for you. In closing, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Don't you realize in a race that everyone runs? But only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. So again, I want to say, why we go to church, why we read our Bible and memorize scripture, why we spend time in prayer and in worship, because that is the training. That is becoming disciplined. Discipled. That's how we become disciples. So we're all in a race. The only difference is of knowing why are you running? Where are you headed? Are you running to God or from Him? So let me just pray for y'all. Lord, again, we thank you for your grace in here today, the freedom to worship you, the freedom to come together to encounter you. And again, I pray for each person in here, each family that is represented, that we all know you in a greater way. And in, in that knowing you, we reflect you. And to reflect in an accurate picture of you, people can receive love, life, hope that only comes in knowing you. So today, Lord, as we run our race, we ask for endurance. We ask just, hey, to be pushed on those days when we feel like we can't make it anymore. Lord, we pray that you bring those people around us that help us. But ultimately, Lord, let us lean into you. Place our trust in you with everything that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Marcus, for coming and sharing a word with us today. Would you show your appreciation to Pastor Marcus this morning? The race is hard, the race has challenges, but the hope we have is fixed upon Christ and keeping our eyes upon Him. And through all things, He helps us. And so, I just want to, I hope you were encouraged, or as he said, maybe challenged this morning. Maybe depending where you fall into the runner category, which of those runners, or maybe you, you're at a place where maybe the, the complacency, judgmental part got to you. I know sometimes that's so true. As we grow in our faith, sometimes we get to a place where we think that we've figured it out. And we need to be reminded that process is never over. It's never over. We're always growing. We're always being stretched. We're always being transformed. Or as we like to say in, in the Christian term, sanctified, becoming more like Christ day in and day out until the day that he chooses to call us home where he comes and gathers his church back together again. And so thank you again for coming and sharing. Thank you for being with us here this morning again. I just want to remind you, if you're able to stick around and help us today to stuff some of the lights into the eggs and take care of a few things that we need to do for our Easter candy hunt, we would greatly appreciate that. So Pastor Laura will meet you in the gym in just a little bit if you're willing to stick around and help with that. Otherwise, we hope you have a wonderful week. Pastor Marcus has a table out there. He has some of his music out there as well as some shirts or anything. If you're interested in that or just connecting with him uh, after service, please feel free to, to do that out there. Again, we've got our men's Bible study Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock.
our Wednesday family nights at 6.15. And we look forward to seeing you back here next week as we celebrate Easter. Uh, and so again, these uh, invite cards are on the back table. Please do grab some invite cards. I challenge you to pray and say, God, who is it that I should invite this year to Easter? And so again, let me just close in prayer before we each go our separate ways. Father, we thank you again for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity we have as brothers and sisters in Christ to gather together here, Lord, to be encouraged, to be challenged, Father, to grow in our faith. And so, Lord, I just pray as we go outside these walls now, God, that you would continue to equip and enable us and empower us through the work of your Holy Spirit to do the work of the ministry, Father, to reach the lost, to be a light and a beacon of hope. Father, help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in Chisholm, on the Iron Range, and around the world. And we thank you for all that you are doing in each of our lives, in our church, in our community, and around the world. And we ask, God, that you be with us this week. In Jesus' name, amen.